We've had outstanding speakers. We've had uh, very good choirs. And we've had a host of musicians to help us along the way. Can I hear an amen on that? Yeah, God is good. So glad to see you, too. So glad to see you. You know, uh, it's good to, to be in God's house. For, for the Bible says, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. Amen? Amen. So on behalf of our pastor and first lady, Bishop Charles, and Lady May Blake, our leaders, Dr. Catherine Gray and Deacon David Moore, the evangelists, missionaries, brotherhood, fellowships, and the entire West Angeles Church family. You are truly, truly welcome. Not only are you welcome tonight, but we invite you to each and every night of this revival. Now, we are living in a day and time that is full of happiness and circumstances that can fill your heart and mind with timidity and fear God has given us a, not a fear, spirit of fear. The question tonight is, are you ready for a breakthrough? Now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. Are y'all ready for a breakthrough? All right, now, all right. Don't leave me up here by myself now. We're we ready for a breakthrough. <laughs> uh, the Holy Spirit will be moving in this place. Be encouraged, equipped, and empowered. Our prayer for you is that you will not leave here like you came. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, I thought about the, the word revival, and I, I looked through scriptures, a lot of scriptures this week, trying to relate, and all they were all good scriptures. The one that really touched me in my spirit was found over in 2 Chronicles 4, and it says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will heal from heaven, I will hear their land and forgive their sins. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bishop always uses that in his sermons. And I just, when I saw it, I said, that's one I want to use too. Amen? Oh, amen. Now we got, we got a, a, some outstanding speakers for you we we got the choir here behind me we're going to have a good night tonight now when i when i i'm, I'm not only going to break through i'm gonna break out amen <laughs> amen amen okay so uh tonight uh as we go along as far as our service is concerned for prayer we have in sister evangelist joy sparks for scripture New and Old Testament, we have in Brother Chad DeWitt, and then we will go into our praise and worship. May we go in that order. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us stand. David said, hallelujah, I was glad when they said unto me, hallelujah, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. So we come to give him praise. Come on, we come to give him praise. Hallelujah. We come to give him glory. Hallelujah. We come to give him honor. Hallelujah. There's nobody like the Lord. He is good. Come on, let's exalt him. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's so worthy of it. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do us like he can. Come on, tell him thank you. Hallelujah, another day in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you for this revival, oh God. Hallelujah, don't let us leave out the same way we came in. Hallelujah, glory to God. We petition you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Come revive us again, oh God. Revive our hearts, oh God. Revive our spirits. Hallelujah, revive our minds, oh God. Hallelujah, we thank you for being in the house of God. Hallelujah, one more time. Come on, thank you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, amen. He blessed us to make it here safe and sound. Hallelujah, amen. For in the house of God, there is love. Hallelujah, his love is unconditional and unfailing. Come on, tell him thank you. Hallelujah, glory to God. In the house of God, there is peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Tell him thank you for your peace, oh God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Your peace that dwelleth within me. Hallelujah, glory to God. 
God. In the house of God, there is joy. Hallelujah. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come on, tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get your praise in. Hallelujah. Come on, get your breakthrough. Hallelujah. The revival is almost over. Hallelujah. Glory to God, but it don't have to be over in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God, we just thank you on tonight. Hallelujah for I know the most shonda for there is nobody like you, oh God. You see what each one stand in need of, God. Hallelujah for you are the God of the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. You are the God of a breakthrough. Hallelujah, shonda. Glory to God. You see every need, oh God. Hallelujah. Meet us at the point of our knees, oh God. Only you can do it, Father. Hallelujah. Come on, tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell him to wash me again. Hallelujah. Purge me again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to be like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to be saved, oh God. I want to be sanctified. Hallelujah. I want to be filled with your spirit, oh God. Hallelujah. My soul love you on tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. For there is nobody like you, oh God. We thank you, God, for your anointing. Hallelujah. For the blood of Jesus that hovers over this house, oh God. The blood of Jesus that hovers over our lives, oh God. Thank you for your healing virtue. Hallelujah. Shonda. Hallelujah. Thank you for encouraging us, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for lifting us up. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shonda. Glory to God. We just thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you for your mercy, your amazing grace. Hallelujah. For it's by grace that we are saved. Hallelujah. Through faith and not our works. Hallelujah. So, God, we just thank you on today. We thank you for our great leader, Bishop Blake, and his lovely wife, Lady May. We thank you for our leaders here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He gave us some great leaders. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We can pattern our lives after them. Hallelujah. Come on, tell him thank you. Shonda, glory to God. There's nobody like you, oh God. And we just thank you again. And Father, we pray a special blessing for our speakers on tonight. Shonda, God, you speak through them. Hallelujah, God, give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church, oh God. Hallelujah, God, how we need you, oh God. Hallelujah, we need you in every area of our life, oh God. Hallelujah, break through, God, in every area of our lives. Clean us. Hallelujah, Shonda, sanctify us again. Oh God, and we just thank you and praise you for it. Trying to come on, tell him one more time. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank him like it's your last time. Tell him, hallelujah. We praise you, oh God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you again for your goodness, oh God. And so in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say thank God. Amen. What are the keys for a breakthrough? Is it drugs? Is it sex? Is it running away? Is it family or friends? Well, the scripture says in Romans 8, 26 and 27, likewise, the spirit also helps us, our helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should ask for when we pray, but the spirit himself uh, makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he, he, can, uh, he searches the hearts knowing what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to God's will. And in Acts 16, 25 and 26, but at midnight Paul and Cyrus were praying and singing hum, uh, singing hymns to the Lord, to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. In Matthew, Matthew 17, 19 through 21. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move 
for he, from here to there, and if you if it moves, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And last, James chapter four verse eight. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, O you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. God bless the reading of the word. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise, your, praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. If you don't mind, come on, let's set our atmosphere down and give God the praise that he deserves. God, there's none like you in this whole wide world, and we thank you now for the love that you continue to show to us. Oh, come on, let God arise in this place. God, we welcome you here. Hallelujah. God, we welcome you in this sanctuary. We welcome you, God, to do what you do best, and that's specialize in the impossible you are a way maker and we praise you you are a wonderful counselor and we bless you your mighty strong tower and we honor you today god oh come on give him praise we praise you jesus hallelujah we bless you jesus hallelujah we honor you jesus Join in with the angels and cry holy. We join in with the angels and cry holy. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. We honor you, Jesus. That's it. Come on. It's not in the song, but it's in what we do. Hallelujah. And we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Sometimes my sacrifice means I don't feel like it. But because I love you, Jesus, I'm going to give you my best praise. Because I love you, Jesus, I'm going to give you my best praise. Hallelujah. We cry. Hallelujah. 
There's nobody like him in this whole wide world. And so for that, God, we say thank you. There's nobody like you in this whole wide world, and so we'll bless you. I've got a song I want to teach to you real quick. It's real easy. If you don't mind, come on, put your hands together like this. Come on. Yes. It goes like this. Listen, listen. Nobody, nobody, nobody can love me like Jesus. Nobody, nobody, nobody can love me like Jesus.
all over and couldn't find nobody like him. Hallelujah. Search high and low and couldn't find nobody like him. He deserves all of the praise. He deserves all of the glory. He deserves all of the honor. And so we'll bless him. You deserve it. My hallelujah. If you don't mind, come on, just say it. Say hallelujah. Oh, come on, yad it out. Say hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you, Jesus. Glory to your name. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. 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 You deserve it, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. I hear you singing it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. That's it. My hallelujah belongs to you.
Amen. Amen. My hallelujah belongs to all of you. Amen. I stop by to tell you that nobody, nobody can love you like Jesus. Nobody. God sent the very best he had in heaven down here just to save us. Amen. And they crucified Jesus. They crucified Jesus. But my Bible tells me on a Friday they crucified him. But my Bible goes on to tell me early Sunday morning he got up with all power. Not some power. He got up with all power on heaven and earth. Amen? Amen. Now we have uh, coming up, we have a uh, rolling video uh, with uh, a testimony from uh, evangelist Gloria Rivers. And then we're going to have a choir selection. And then we're going to have offering by Larry, Elder Larry Edmondson. Amen? In that order. Bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continually be in my mouth. I bless God and praise God for his goodness and his mercy. I want to share with you what an experience I had about a month ago during the month of August and September. In the month of August, or August 18th to be exact, I sustained a two-degree burn on my right ankle. This burn continued to be a nuisance. I went to the doctors. The doctors tried to help me out of the emergency room. They were very, very sensitive to my pain and my ache. Fast forward, my burn continued to not be healed the way it should be healed. I did have a plan to go to a mission trip to the Dominican Republic when I decided to take my trip, along came Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma was an imposition to my departure day. With the, with the airline, my date just kept moving backwards and moving backwards and moving backwards. But God does what God wants to do, Psalm 135 and 6. And so the Lord led us to work a way around getting through the airport. So instead of Going to Miami, we detoured to Florida, to Philadelphia. I say we, my friend, my partner and I, we went to Florida and was able to land in the Dominican Republic three days later. However, going to the Dominican Republic, we had a lot of obstacles, a lot of things happened, starting with where we, our lodging, where we had to stay. No water, no light, cold water, bugs, bed bugs, everything that goes along with foreign mission. So I decided we went to church one Sunday, uh, the last Sunday, as a matter of fact, coming back home because the doctors had warned me to take very care of my injury, my burn. They gave me bandages. They gave me ointment. They gave me a lot of warning, do not get it wet, do not get any foreign dirt on it, on and on, everything that would infect an affliction. Went to church that Sunday night, and of course, along comes Hurricane Maria. On her way down to Puerto Rico, she stopped over in the Dominican Republic with a torrential downpour of rain. We were in church at that time, needless to say, we had to get out of there. Bus driver wanted us out of church because we needed to get in the bus to get out of the area. It was a very, very rural area, no paved streets. It was just not a place to be with an onset of Hurricane Maria, grade three, on her way. However, I became very apprehensive. I did not want to put my foot on the floor. I did not want my foot to get wet with the mud. I began to just resist. I cannot with my feet. My bandages cannot be wet. I cannot put my foot on here, but I was just being coaxed. Come on, Gloria, we've got to go, we've got to go. Finally, I decided and relented. I put my foot on the floor. 
the water came above my ankle that was burned that was not to be wet. God is a good God. I got on the bus and I began to panic. I wanted everything that was dry to dry off the water from my feet. However, nothing worked. Got to the mission house and I began to take care of my ankle the best way that I could. Applied much ointment, much bandages. The following morning, I was awakened and when I got up, I decided, let me look at my foot to take care of my foot. And lo and behold, I got a name in healing. My burn and my foot was as smooth as a baby's face. Praise God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name forever. Amen. How many of you know you don't have to wait till the battle is over, but you can shout now. Hallelujah. Come on, is there a battle that you're enduring, but God said don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout now. Come on, look to your neighbor and say, I'm going to shout now. I'm going to shout right now. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him.
Amen. Keep on shout. Let everybody say amen. We're heading out to give a worship the Lord in our offering. And just keep on shouting. Let it radiate through your giving. You know, so you want to go ahead and give something more than you anticipated to give. In your shout. Bless you, West Angeles. My name is Ella Larry Edmondson. And I'm here to... Uh, Go forth in the ministry of giving. Be encouraged to give generously to advance the uh, work of the Lord and the revival. We're anxious to hear our speakers. But as you give, know that you're blessing the revival. And you don't know who may be affected by your giving. There's no price on salvation. But when you give and the revival goes forth, somebody may be saved, somebody may be delivered, somebody may be, get a breakthrough. And we're, pleased, we're believing that tonight. So in your giving, if you use the envelope system, um, and uh, just encourage, uh, at least give, if you can, strive to give a $25 offering. More if you're able, less if you have to. But be encouraged. If you will stand on both sides as we go forth, I'm just going to beg your indulgement for a minute as the deacons take their places. I've got engaged, and my fiance is over here, Shanika Lanier. Would you raise your hand? We just shout, shout now. I know y'all got tired of me walking around with my chin hanging the floor, dragging the floor. So, uh, Shanika Lanier, bless you, baby. If you would turn to the center aisle on both sides, the deacons will uh, gather and we'll go forth. Let's say a word of prayer. Keep shouting. Don't stop shouting. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to come into the sanctuary to participate in our giving. We want to be revived tonight. We want a breakthrough. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless our, the seeds that we're sowing. Let it advance the cause of Christ, the kingdom of God. That the word declared on tonight would infuse our spirit and we would be blessed, transformed, and delivered in Jesus' name. Bless our giving. If you would turn, the ushers uh, will direct you uh, as you come forth. God bless you. Everybody say bless.
Let, let the church say amen. amen. Let's give this choir and these musicians a big applause. Amen. Do an outstanding job. God bless you. Also, we want to give a, a hand to our online community. Amen. God bless you. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go, next, we're going to go into a selection prior to our speakers coming out. Now, once the selection is over, I'm, I'm going to ask that you all stand and accept the tag team. Amen. May God bless them, and I hope that you're praying for them prior to them speaking. Amen. May God speak through them. Come on, lift your hands if you love Jesus. Do you love him tonight? Hallelujah. Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me. To provide my every need. You were there when I was lonely. You were there in all my pain. Guiding my footsteps, shelter from the rain. And it was you. You made my life complete. You are to me my everything. That is why I sing, Jesus, I love you, because you can, couldn't imagine, if you weren't there, oh, Jesus, I love you. You're the peace in my storm. Your loving arms protect me. You shelter me from harm. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're my strong tower, my dearest and and it was you, you made my life complete, you are to me my everything, that is why I sing, Jesus I love you, because you care, I couldn't imagine, you weren't there, you weren't there. 
do. Oh, yes, I do. I lift my hands and say, I love you. I lift my hands and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Because you are you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our speakers for tonight will be Evangelist Arlita Houston, along with, amen along with Elder Ron Simmons. God bless you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Jesus, I love you. Because you're there. If it's a love of God that constrains me to love him, I love him because he first loved me. I love him because he lifted me out of the sinking sand and brought me into the marvelous light. I love him because nobody can love me like he does. I love him because he's the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. I love him because he cares. Praise God. You may have your seats. Praise the Lord. I'd like to give honor to our pastor in his absence, to Dr. Gray, to Elder Moore, Deacon Moore, praise the Lord, prophecy, amen, <laughs> and to all the saints of God. I thank God for breakthrough. I thank God because as I sat in my seat every night, I was being scared every night. I was like, Sunday night I came and evangelist Karen White just stood here and said and I was like oh Lord then Monday night I came and sister Marcia was walking across she had her strut she was walking across the front then Wednesday night Tuesday night I came and evangelist Karen Cox was just going all across the platform you know speaking the word and I came last night, and our speaker got up. She didn't have no notes. She just walked back and forth, back and forth. Praise God. But I said, Lord, I thank you for a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Glory to God that I can be myself. Hallelujah. And I thank God for what he's given me. What? are the keys for a breakthrough. Keys are instruments used to open or lock a door. There are different keys to different doors. A key you don't have is a door you can't open. And a door you can't open may hold a privilege you can't enjoy. I don't know about you, but keys can be a real problem if you lose them. A couple of years ago, I was here the last night of the revival. I came in and I sat down over there and I dropped my keys on the side of me instead of putting them in my purse. And as the night went on, the person sitting beside me unbeknownstly picked up my keys and put them in her purse. So as I was ready to leave, and I'm staying here until everybody's gone almost, when I went to my car and went through my purse, no keys. I'm like, oh my God, I ran back to the church, look where I was sitting, no keys. I couldn't ask anybody to take me home. I couldn't start my car, because even if I got home, I didn't have keys to get in. But thank God for friends. I had a friend that let me spend the night until I found out where my keys were. Keys in the Bible are used as a symbol of authority. In Isaiah 22 and 22, we see Eliakim, the priest, receiving the key of the house of David on his shoulder. A trusted servant to the king wore the key to the king's house on a hook on his shoulder. Therefore, he had the authority to open or close the king's door. 
In Revelations 3 and 7, it uses a symbol, similar symbolism, speaking plainly of Jesus having the key of David. In ancient Israel, the human king was in fact the steward of God, the true king of the land. Similarly, the divine Christ is the steward of his father's kingdom. With, the, with that authority, only Jesus can allow or disallow entrance into his kingdom. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. A key is also knowledge and understanding or revelation of a principle contained in the word of God. In Matthew 16, 16 through 19, Jesus or Yahshua asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? To which Peter replies, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Peter was blessed by God with the revelation of who Jesus really is. Up until that no moment, no one got it. Peter still didn't really get it. You know, God can give you something and you don't get it until you get alone and spend time with him for more understanding. Jesus was saying upon this rock or foundation, the revelation that he is the Messiah or the son of God, his kingdom would be built and not upon Peter. He was saying that those who receive from Father God the revelation of who Jesus is and surrender their lives to his lordship are those whom he will build his kingdom. This indeed was and is a breakthrough to all who come to know him as Lord and Savior. The keys were not just given to Peter, but to the church. These keys to the kingdom still have a lot to do with the revelation of who Jesus is. He being God is always present tense. I am that I am. Revelation always brings a certain amount of authority in the one who has received the revelation. Paul, Peter, John, and others used these keys to loose things on earth as they were already loosed in heaven and to bind things on earth as they were already bound in heaven, as they were given greater revelation to bring growth to the kingdom. The same principle is at work here and now to the extent that Jesus is revealed to us primarily through his word or in a personal interaction with him. One gains kingdom authority based on seeing something about Jesus, which brings revelation. Bishop Wright has released some things on earth in the, kingdom of, in the kingdom as God gives him greater revelation. The revelation that we need unchanging faith in this changing world. Our faith is in Jesus whom God has sent and there is nothing changing about him. Our God is immutable, he changes not. Bishop Blake has the church praying for pure doctrine, holiness, our lifestyles, good works, and other things. These things have been loosed in heaven, and we have the authority to loose them here on earth. False doctrine, ungodliness, unrighteousness have been bound in heaven, and we have the authority to bind them here on earth. Every breakthrough or revelation from Father God should take us to a new level of authority in the kingdom. We are taught to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The enemy attempts to set up barriers or lock doors so we cannot break through unto the fullness that God has for us. God through Christ wants us to be triumphant. In 2 Corinthians 2, 14a, it says, Now thanks be to God, which always, not sometimes, but always, causes us to triumph in Christ. 
We have to pay attention to the in Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we all know it. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. David understood breakthrough from a military perspective. When an enemy has you hemmed in, held back, and confined, you must press against that force in such a manner that will break its hold. David knew that God was a breaker. He anointed him as Baal Perizim. In the New Living Translation in 2 Samuel 5 and 20, it says, The Lord did it. He burst through my enemies like a raging flood. He is the Lord who burst through. David is describing the natural power of water when it's released from limiting confines, when it breaks out of its banks or bursts from behind a dam. Great power is displayed as the water washes away everything in its path. David describes the power of God in a similar way because when God unleashes his power, there is nothing that can stop him. Ask Pharaoh and the Egyptians at the Red Sea. Ask Satan when he was kicked out of heaven. Ask the grave when he tried to keep our Savior down. Before the breakthrough, the scene in the scripture is called the Valley of Rephaim, meaning the house of giants. After the breakthrough, it's called Baal Perizim, meaning possessor of the breached. God broke through the stronghold of the enemy who thought they were giants. Do you have any giants you need to see fall? God is able. God cannot fail. So what does breakthrough look like us? Because it's not a term that's found in the New Testament. It's found in the Old Testament. So breakthrough looks like a process of removing an obstacle to your spiritual walk with God. It suggests a preceding struggle that finally peaks and finds resolution. It's a gaining a deeper revelation of biblical truth. It's receiving an answer to prayer or winning a victory over sin. It's an experience having reached a new level, whatever that level means to the individual because we're all on different levels. Breakthrough is about rising above things of the past and showing that we do not have to be bound by the past, but that through Jesus Christ and his mighty Holy Spirit, we have a glorious present and a future to grasp a hold of. There is no future in the past. The past is gone. Today is here, and God wants us to live today in such a way that is far better than anything we have ever accomplished. What are some breakthroughs in the Bible? Paul's experience on the Damascus Road, because he saw for the first time who Jesus really is, the woman with the issue of blood, because she came to know Jesus as a healer. Mary going to visit her cousin Elizabeth and seeing that God performed a miracle in her old age and that he could do the same for her in her young age and yet without a man. Peter's experience on the housetop in Joppa, Joppa because he learned the gospel was for all people. The man with the legions of demons cast out of him. Those who were healed of leprosy and the list goes on and on. So let's look at some hindrances to breakthrough and then four phases with keys for breakthrough. Hindrances to breakthrough. We are waiting for God and not realizing that he is waiting for us. It's been said over and over that this is a participation activity. Pride, Satan's downfall, he causes us to uh, the work in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And the Bible says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall, presuming or presumption that you know the best way that God should answer your prayer. David prayed in Psalms 1913, keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Being disappointed because God didn't answer your prayer. Being angry at God and blaming him for a tragedy when the word of God says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. Phase one of a crisis, of a breakthrough. First, you have to identify the crisis. What is your struggle? Is it drugs, prescription drugs, or non-prescription drugs? Is it sex, fornication, adultery, homosexuality? Is it running away, don't want to deal with things, want to get away, suicidal spirit? 
Is it a dysfunctional family? And who doesn't come from a dysfunctional family? Is it friends can't keep them or always trying to believe, please them? David's crisis was a military one, and it had a name, the Philistines. They had, in a strategic and defiant move, raided a valley in the Jewish territory, and it turned out that it was a direct route to the capital of the city of Jerusalem. It was David's stronghold, and David was very concerned. We, too, have a spiritual battle against the systems of this world, against our inner conflicts of the old nature of sinful lust and desires, and against our adversary, the devil. If we don't have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are not equipped to fight the battle. David knew God. Do you know Jesus? We have to know that God can and will allow us to face challenges, obstacles, and crises that will push us up against our faith and belief in God. He allows us to go through. When you look at the word through, you see the word rough. But if you keep on looking, you'll see the word out. He will allow us to go through even though it's rough so we can break out of ourselves and break through to the next level. Praise the Lord. Phase two is we go to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We cry out for help. We go to God in the name of Jesus. Our biblical response says in James 4 and 8, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you double-minded, uh, you sinners, and make your hearts pure, you double-minded. But when you go to verse 10, it says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humbling ourselves leads to exaltation. It leads to being lifted up. It leads to breaking through to different levels. The word says that men ought to always pray. Your prayer needs to be specific. Set me free from these drugs. They are hindering me from my purpose in your kingdom. I'm dependent upon you and you are my source. My body is your temple and having sex outside of marriage defiles your temple. Cleanse me and make me whole. Help me to stop running away, to know that you have not given me a spirit of fear but of love, power, and of a sound mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Show me how to love my family and friends that have hurt me. Teach me how to forgive them so that I can pray for them and not allow them to become idols in my life where I put them before you. Help me to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love my neighbors as you love them. David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord said, go up, for I will deliver them into your hands. This was war, and you don't fight a battle without your war clothes on. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness of this age, against hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand, that you may be able to stand your ground, that you may be able to stand and face the enemy. Stand, therefore, having girded up your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery decks darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit David received his answer to prayer and his instructions to go up along with the promise that God would deliver them into his hands. So first we have to identify the crisis. We have to go to God in prayer and we have to wait for God's response. And then we have to obey what God says. But I want to go back to we have to wait. Because sometimes, maybe even a lot of times, our answers don't come as quickly as David did. And it seems his answers, it seems like God is too late for us. But we know he's always on time, waiting on God 
is training ground for building strong faith as we learn to put our trust in him. Sometimes we may have to add fasting with our praying. Fasting disciplines the body and it makes us a useful instrument to God. It determines our victory over the flesh. It builds our inner spirit by diminishing the power of flesh over us. Fasting is not a diet. It must be with prayer, repentance, and soul searching. Praise the Lord. Phase three is that we go on in faith. The acronym for faith is forsaking all. I trust him. Forsaking everything that you have put your trust in. Clinging to him and him alone. He can wipe out the taste for drugs. He can keep you without sex and you will be more fulfilled and saving yourself for the one he will bring into your life for holy matrimony or saving yourself just for him and him alone who died for you and gave yourself gave himself for you when you recognize that you are dead to sin and alive to righteousness and that the life he gives is abundant life and full of glory you can stop running away from the things and run to him you don't have to give up because you already have the victory we have to learn to obey god's word Jesus is the word. We have to abide in his word and let his word abide in us. We have to respond to the word and not our circumstances. David had to make a decision. Will he go with God's word or will he go with his own feelings? David decided to step out on faith. What is your choice? Will you step out on faith or will you sit down based on your emotions? Phase four is to praise him in advance. Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Our biblical response says in Acts 16, 25 to 26, at midnight, the worst time of the night, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns, praises to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. There's an old song that says, praise the Lord, for our God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord, for the chains that seem to bind you, they drop powerless behind you when you praise him. Evangelist Karen White told us how and demonstrated how when we praise God, he comes and take a seat and begins to fight our battles for us. David was told in his second battle with the Philistines to wait until he heard a sound of marching in of the mulberry trees. The sound of marching was not merely wind blowing, but it was the sound of the angelic armies of God going ahead of them into battle. Jesus has already won for battle for us. The breakthrough has already been accomplished, but he wants us to make a sound. We need to knock on the doors of heaven. We need to use the key of praise and worship to open the doors and loose blessings, not just for us, but also for others so that they can be set free. When the chains fell off of Paul and Silas, they also fell off of everyone that was in the prison, and the guard and his whole family were saved. Will your praise bring salvation to someone else? Will your praise incite or encourage someone else to praise God? We will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in our mouths. Praise God, and God bless you. Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah. You guys, be seated, be seated. 
that. What a word. That, you know what? I'm kind of mad at these two right here. You guys put me up behind that. That. We need to pray for them too. Let's give Sister Houston another hand. Amen. I first met Sister Houston when I first came to West Angeles. I was such a babe in Christ and I knew nothing about God. And I decided I was going all in, meaning I was going to do whatever they told me to do. And so they told me that I should go to 6 a.m. prayer. You need to know how much bigger change that was for me because of where I came from but I was willing to go all in and one of the first people I met was Sister Houston and I can remember going back home and sharing with my wife saying there's some nice people at West Angeles because they took me in because I had no clue what I was doing Right, I just knew I didn't want what I had. And I thank God as we sat next to each other, it was just such a blessing. And to hear fire, still the same. Amen. Amen. Love you. Praise God. Lord, help. I want to thank God for my wife who is here. I want to, Yolanda. Amen. I also want to thank God for Dr. Gray, my buddy, Deacon Moore. And then to the best pastor in the world, Bishop Charles E. Blake. Hallelujah. And to his right hand, Sister Lady May L. Blake. Amen. Anytime I'm asked to do anything in the church, be it read a scripture or pray or even grace this pulpit, I just thank God because one of the greatest preachers in the world stands here. And it's not by accident that God sent me here. And while I was sitting there, I got a word for the choir. Choir. The Lord brought you here with your gift. He brought you here with your gift. He brought you to the greatest church in the world to use your gift. As I was sitting there, he said, let the choir know. Amen. Your breakthrough is giving your all when you sing. And we saw it happen here. So I've done what I was supposed to do. Amen. Let me get into the word coming from Matthew 14 and 25 and 33. Now in the, and you guys all know this passage of scripture. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on, they were troubled saying, it's a ghost. And they get out for fear. Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. 
it is I, do not be afraid. And Jesus answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And they in And those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Pray with me as I bring this message entitled, Don't Five Minutes Before Your Breakthrough. Don't leave five minutes before your breakthrough. Peter and the other disciples on the boat with Jesus walking on water. And Peter asks permission to join him. Jesus gives him permission. Hmm. We really could stop right there. Peter got permission. Many people do things in the name of the Lord and never get permission. But that's another sermon. Peter steps out the boat and begins to walk on water, but takes his eyes off the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Peter starts out trusting God. He starts walking on water. A miracle. But in the midst of the miracle, Peter takes his eyes off the Lord and focus on the storm. Many of us have witnessed miracles in our lifetime. We witness things that can only be explained that it was God. But in the midst of these miracles, a storm arises. In the middle of being used by God, you get some bad news. You find out that your son or your daughter, who you sent off to college, is walking away from the faith. And now they're even smoking marijuana. Or the job that you've been on for years have sent you a letter and say they're having a layoff. And your name is on the list. In the middle of all your miracles, all that you've seen God do, a storm arrives. I'm here to tell you, don't leave five minutes before your breakthrough. Stay on your knees, mother. Keep fasting and pray, praying, fathers. Don't leave five minutes before your breakthrough. Jonah had been called to minister, and he accepted the calling. But when God told him to go to Compton, he said, uh, wait a minute. When God told him to go to Nineveh, he said no out of fear because Nineveh was a bad place. And because of his no, he had to be persuaded by God. What was the difference between Jonah and Peter? Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. Jonah was disobedient. Some of us are waiting for a breakthrough, but our breakthrough has been blocked by our disobedience. Turn to your neighbor and say, God will not bless no mess. Yes, 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 we know that we all sin and fall short to the glory of God. 
And yes, we know that no man is perfect, no, not one, but it's practicing that God hates. That one thing that is wrong in your life and the word of God confirms your behavior is wrong. First John 3, 4, and 6 says, Everyone who makes practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or know him. Make sure your behavior isn't blocking your breakthrough. Once again, say with me, God will not bless no mess. When I was first given this assignment, I thought about all the breakthroughs that have occurred in my life and how each situation made me a better person. I thought about the oppositions and the trials and the tribulations and the storms that at the time looked like unbeatable monsters. As I look back on each obstacle, each trial, and how I came out made me who I am today. And then there were the haters, be it jealousy or whatever, their attacks were designed to destroy me, but God protected me. But God comforted me. But God took care of me. After each breakthrough, I thought about how much I learned about myself and how much I learned about God's love for me. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. When I read Peter's story, I wanted to learn from his mistake. So I have learned how to examine myself when I face oppositions. I examine myself when I face trials and tribulations. I have learned how to examine myself in the midst of storms. The last thing I want to hear from God is, O oh, ye of little faith. Now, when I was a babe in Christ, I didn't handle oppositions very well. Sister Houston can probably tell you that. There was worry, crying the blues. See, I had just come out the world, and I would throw B.B. King on real quick. <laughs> I even questioned God, or I left five minutes before the miracle. But God even used those times to make me better. One of the things I learned was how to let go and let God. That wasn't easy for someone who loved to control every situation that came down the pike. I know that was me, none of you guys, that was, that was me, right? I like to control. My wife is saying amen, I heard her. I had to learn that God wasn't going to break through if I still thought I could kick the door down. I quickly learned how to let go and let God. Since I've been here at the church, we have a pastor that we have actually seen go from faith to faith to faith to faith. We've watched God use him in so many different ways, but at each juncture, there. Like they say, that another level, another devil. And we had the pleasure in watching Bishop 
be so cool. He just lets go and lets God. I've seen him in some situations where I would come home and say, you know, if it was me, man, I just had to ask God to forgive me because it'd be on. Bishop, just as cool, come, let it go. And then we all sit back and watch God fix it. I learn from, uh, from other people's trials and tribulations. I quickly learned at each failure, each victory built a sturdy foundation for me to stand on, and it prepared me for the next battle. Along with each victory came wisdom. And one of the very first things I learned that there was going to be more battles. There were going to be more trials. There were going to be more tribulations and more storms. Every once in a while, I like to look out the rear view mirror of my BC life. BC, before Christ. I, can tell, I can't tell you how many times I almost lost my life out there in that world. At that time, I didn't know God, but I'm sure glad he knew me. <laughs> in all my foolishness, God still protected me. God still had a plan for my life. God still loved me. And the crazy part about it I didn't even know he was working on my behalf. So one of the very first questions I asked, God, why? Why did you save me? In the beginning, I couldn't answer that question. But today I can. Today I know that everywhere my feet land is where I'm supposed to be. God has a calling upon my life, and he knew I wouldn't sit quietly once I arrived. God also knew that I loved being on the front line. I love front line work. How could I be on the front line for the devil and get to the church and sit quietly. <laughs> Onward, Christian soldier. Onward. Isaiah 6 and 8. Also, I hear the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then said I, Here I am. Send me. Or like they say in the hood, I'm down. Let's do this. As I grow in the Lord, my goal is to learn how to face trials and tribulations, learning how to face oppositions, learning to walk and talk like everything's going to be all right in the midst of the storm. James 1, 2, and 4, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials in various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So I have learned how to smile in the midst of the storm. I smile because God has brought me from a very long way. So why would God save my life when I didn't even know him and now in the midst of a storm think that I would die or perish? We don't serve a God like that. He could have left me in the party when they put the shotgun to my head. 
He could have let the bullets hit me when I was riding down Crenshaw in my lowrider, and they blew the windows out my car. Then I'm going to get here in the church and a storm arise, and I'm supposed to be scared? No. No. If he wanted me to die, he could have got me back then. Today, I work in the women's jail. One of the things that I try and teach the ladies is just because you made a mistake doesn't mean you are a mistake. Many of the ladies are fighting cases and they go back and forth to court for months and for some even years fighting to be free. These ladies need a breakthrough. They need a miracle. But in the meantime, how do they deal with weight? Waiting in a cell no bigger than this. Waiting. Depression, anxiety, loneliness meets them every day. My job, along with being a counselor, it's to be a bright, shining light in a dark place. Because who I work for, I can't preach Jesus, but I can walk and let my light so shine. I teach groups in the church, I mean in the jail, and sometimes I try and turn it into a church, but they got cameras everywhere, right? So I teach these groups, and my groups, they are, not, they are not forced to come to. So when I first started off, I would get two or three ladies to come to the group. But I don't need a speaker or nothing. I speak loud. And when I'm speaking and they're locked up in their cells, I speak loud. And I start sharing. And so now I average 30, 40 girls a group. But still, I had this one thing that bothered me. I said, look, they're, they're locked up. How can they have joy today? So God gave me a song that I only have two verses that I teach them in all of the classes that I have. And it goes like this. Satan, you're not going to steal my joy. You'll never steal my joy. You can't win. Satan, you're not going to steal my joy. You'll never steal my joy. You can't win. Satan, you're not going to steal my joy. You'll never steal my joy. You can't win. So I, ta I teach these girls this song, right? And you guys want to help me with that, you can. <laughs> Add some words. <laughs> Who knows, right? So I teach the girls the songs, and now so many girls know the song. Sometimes they're walking down the hall, chained up, chained together. And I walk, they'll see me, and they'll go, Satan, you're not going to steal my joy. You'll never steal my joy. I walk into a pod, right? A pod has 25 cells on the bottom, 25 cells on the top. Two girls to each cell. I walk in, and when that door closes, bam, you hear it. They all look out their doors because they never know what's going on, right? And they'll see me and over in cell 26. Satan, you're not going to steal my joy. You'll never steal my joy. You can't win. And they, I got a little choir there now.
in the midst of the storm is when you get your breakthrough. We have to learn how to take, never to take our eyes off of Christ, no matter what's going on. See, a miracle can't happen until impossible shows up. Some say it's always darkest before the dawn. So in the midnight hour, get ready for your breakthrough. A group of tourists was touring a museum in Europe. With them was a guide explaining each piece of art. It was about 15 or 16 tourists, and they, were, they would get in front of one piece of an art, and the guide would tell them about that piece, and then they'd move on down the hall, and they'd look at the next piece of art, and he'd explain when that was painted and who painted it, and they'd move on down the hall, and they'd look at this sculpture, and they, he'd explain that piece, and all of a sudden, they came upon this one piece. And this one piece had two characters on the painting, Satan and one of the religious leaders of the time. They were playing chess. The religious leader, all he had was his king on the board. Satan had six or seven pieces had him surrounded. Satan on the picture is grinning. Ha, ha, ha. Got him. At the bottom of the picture is called checkmate. So the, the, the guide explains this picture, and they move down the hall, except for one dude. One cat just sat there and he looked at that painting. A few minutes later, still looking. The rest of the group has moved on. They've looked at this painting. They've looked at this sculpture. But this one guy, mesmerized by this painting, Satan, <laughs> got him. They didn't know, the group didn't know that this was the world champion chess player. All of a sudden, he comes running down the hall. It's a lie! It's a lie! The king got another move! The king got another move! It ain't over! The king got another move! I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what people done told you. I don't care if that daughter and them kids is tripping. The king got another move. I don't care if you lost your job. I don't care what's going on in your life. King Jesus got another move. That the road would be 
Father God, we just thank you and praise you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for how you showed up on this evening. We thank you, Father God, that you got another move. We thank you, Father God, that we can believe that everything's going to be all right. Our breakthrough is here. Right now, I just want to pray for those that believe in your breakthrough. I want to pray for you. I want you to come down here right now. We're going to chain up, link up, hold up, because your breakthrough is here. You got your breakthrough. Your breakthrough is in your mind. You got to believe that you believe that you believe. I don't care what you're going through. The king got another move. We're going to pray, but I want you to look whatever you're going through in the face and believe that it's been destroyed, right? God has taken care of it. Don't be like Peter, afraid. Breakthrough is happening right now because the breakthrough is in your thinking. Father God, Father God, we just thank you and praise you, Father God, for this time. We thank you, Father God, that you feel fresh on us this evening, and we believe in the breakthrough. Father God, we know that we know that we know that we know that everything is going to be all right. So, Father God, we raise our heads up, Father God, and we'll walk through these storms. We'll walk through opposition. We'll walk through trials and tribulation because we know you've already went through. So we thank you and we praise you and we're going to show you that we believe by praising your holy name. Hallelujah! 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 I don't 